Welcome back everybody. Today, I'm gonna to give you the three tips that have helped me the most when it comes to painting reflections in watercolor. It's a cloudy and rainy day here. A great day to stay inside and paint. So today, we're gonna to talk about painting reflections in watercolor. I'm gonna show you the three tips that help me get from this painting to this painting. So tip number one is think in layers. Most of the time in watercolor, you're painting from your lightest values to your darkest values. So you need to think about what the best process is to get the results that you're wanting to get. So let's take a look at the reference photo for this scene. So we have this beautiful morning scene with these boats and lovely reflections in the water. And I, I wanted to focus in on this area. I thought this was the most interesting part of the painting. So I had to think about how to simplify the scene and then how to turn it into something that would be paintable for me. So let's talk about what we want to accomplish in our first wash. We want to paint the soft sky and paint the lighter values in all of the different boats and all the different shapes, and then establish the lighter colors of the water. So when we think about the reflections of the scene, we need to realize that we're painting reflections in layers. Our first layer is the first wash, and then on top of that, we have the more solid dark reflections. So you have the general color of the water, then you have the soft ripples in the water, and then you have the darker reflections in the water. So all of these are done in different phases of the painting, in different steps. We wanna think through each of the layers along the way that will add up to create the whole painting in the end. So let me walk you through what the first phase of this painting looked like for me. So I started by wetting down my paper on the front and back. I did leave a dry area near the horizon, and that's because I wanted to have a stopping point where the horizon starts is a really bright area of the water. I wanted to experiment with leaving that area dry, painting the sky how I wanted to paint it, and then work my way down into the other areas of the water. So I'm starting off with the warm colors of the sky, I'm using some raw sienna, some quinacridone gold, and some permanent rose matter. And then you'll notice I'm stopping at the horizon line, and I'm still painting wet into wet, and I'm dropping some darker values to create those hills in the distance. And for that, I'm using some lavender and some cobalt blue and some cerulean and I'm painting it wet into wet, just dropping that darker value in to the background. So once I'm done with that, then I'm moving down into the water. I dropped a really thin layer of blue for the distance, and then as I move to where my boats are, that's when I'm painting a lot stronger and a lot warmer. I really want to get that sense of light on the water and I'm dropping in little bits of color on the boats and other areas that have lighter values of color. I'm dropping that in now while it's wet. And one of the most important things to remember is that when I'm using a lot of water on my brush and the paper is wet, there's a lot of drying that's gonna happen, and when that happens, there's a lot of fading that happens. So the most important thing in this stage is to ensure that my values are strong enough. So as I move down closer to the foreground in the painting, I'm cooling down the colors that I'm using, but I'm also getting stronger and stronger in value as I move towards the foreground. All right, and now I am ready to paint the ripples in the water, the soft changes in values that I need to paint wet into wet. Now's the time to do that. So I'm loading my brush up with thicker paint and I'm painting it wet into wet and 
creating these lovely soft edges with these ripples in the water. And once again, I'm loading more onto my brush and I'm darkening the foreground even more because I know that it's going to fade once it dries. And I really want it to be strong enough. We want the foreground to lead the viewer into the scene. And in order to do that, it needs to be a stronger value. Okay, at this stage, I'm going to let my painting dry and then I'll come back and I'll paint my middle values and darks. Okay, my painting is dried and now I'm trying to find a large connected shape for these middle values and the darks of the scene. And so this bit of the dock and all the boats, all of this is going to be one connected shape. And now I'm getting to the phase two of the reflections. And I have the middle values of these boats painted. Now before any of this dries, I'm going to paint the dark reflections on the water. And these solid reflections are the next layer that we need to be mindful of. So I'm trying to think of these reflections as one big shape. You'll notice in my early example, there were a lot of separations in this painting. And this is one of the big things that I learned is that making these reflections all one big shape is really key to painting it cleanly. And that leads us to tip number two, paint confidently and cleanly. The more that I fiddle with all of these reflections and these little marks, the worse that it actually looks. There are ways that you can practice this. You can work on your brushwork. You can understand what type of mark you're trying to make before you make it on your painting. I encourage a lot of painters to do this. Have a piece of scrap paper close to where you're working and load your brush up and make some practice marks. Understand what your brush is going to do before you touch it to your painting. By painting more confidently and cleanly and keeping my marks as simple as I can and not overworking it, I can make my reflections actually look a lot more believable. It's interesting how that works. It's like if you can let go a little bit and not be so picky and try to make it look exactly like the reference photo, when you can loosen up and let go a little bit, it will actually look more realistic. And I'm using this rigger brush to paint the reflection of these masks while this shape is wet. So I confidently paint them in as few strokes as possible. Now I'm going back in and adding some darks around the scene. And I'm adding some dark into these reflections while this shape is still wet. And I'm adding some little darks for figures and other details around the scene. You'll notice that I painted the reflections before I actually painted the mass of the boats. And that brings me to tip number three. Align your reflections properly. The reflections must mirror what it's reflecting. So since I painted this in reverse, and I kind of did that because I needed to paint this large connected shape, and the timing was right to paint the reflection actually before the actual mast was painted. So now I need to make sure as I paint these that they are in the right spot so the reflections are accurate. And another thing that I'm doing, I'm turning my paper sideways. It's actually easier to paint these masts straight if you turn your painting sideways. It's a more natural movement. So that's something that you can practice as well. And now I'm painting some more fine lines, some of the rigging on these boats. And I'm using a sign writer's brush. It's a lot like a rigger brush, but it has a finer point and it can hold more water and paint. And it can make some really small, delicate marks. And that's what I'm using for all the rigging on these two boats. And if I add some other masts or rigging or things like that, I can always go back and make my reflections reflect those shapes as well. And here is a look at the final painting. So let's recap really quick the three tips to help you paint reflections. Tip number one, think in layers. Remember, you have a wet and wet phase typically. Then you'll have a phase where you're painting the more solid areas of your reflection, the darker shapes over the lighter shapes. 
and these will add up to believable reflections. Tip number two, paint confidently and cleanly. The more you fiddle around and mess with these brush marks, the more complicated you make the reflections, the worse that they're actually gonna look. So take some time to practice the marks on a scrap piece of paper before you actually paint them on your painting. And tip number three, be mindful to align things properly so your reflections will look more believable. I hope that you found this content helpful today. I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Is painting reflections something that you struggle with? If so, which one of these three tips do you think will be most helpful for you? And before you go, I wanted to mention, if you haven't checked out my free video lesson, How to Avoid Overworking Your Painting, take a look at it. You can follow the link below. You can get to it in my bio and Instagram. So I've got some really good feedback from this lesson. And this is a video lesson that helps address something that I had to work through quite a bit when I was learning how to paint watercolor. And that is overworking my painting. I talk through eight different tips to help you avoid overworking your painting. You can follow the link below, take a look at it, and I hope it can help you out as well. Thank you once again for spending time with me. Keep practicing, keep working and moving forward in your watercolor painting, and I'll see you next time.